says, um, would you still respect a colleague personally knowing they behave in corruption and unfair practices just to secure a conviction of your client? Yeah, of course not. I wouldn't respect them if they did that. Lawyer Love is trying to gag the defense, y'all. In this video, you're going to see how Lawyer Love is basically trying to tell the judge to tell the defense to shut up. All right, all right, all right. Now, on the heels of our last video, where we made it clear that DA Love, that the prosecution is probably paying attention to the social media posts and is probably gaining some kind of inclination how they want to use it. On the heels of that, we get a motion from DA Love, which is looking to have all of the interviews, have all of the podcasting by the defense and everybody else. She's looking to have all of that stopped. So we want to send a shout out to Thugger Daily who posted this. It is a motion from DA Love. I'm going to read it here real quickly. And you're going to see just what I said yesterday, that she is looking to leverage these interviews to her advantage, to the advantage of the state, to the advantage of the prosecution. Listen closely to what she says. I'm going to read this word for word. Comes now the state of Georgia and moves this honorable court to instruct the defense to refrain from making further extrajudicial statements about this case moving forward. Georgia Rule of Professional Conduct 3.6 prohibits lawyers participating in litigation from making extrajudicial statements a reasonable person would, quote, believe to be disseminated by means of public communication if the lawyer knows or reasonably should know that it will have a substantial likelihood of materially prejudicing an adjudicative procedure in the matter, unquote. A relevant factor, quote, in determining prejudice is the nature of the proceeding involved, with criminal jury trials being the most sensitive to extrajudicial speech. The character, credibility, reputation of a party, and any opinion as to the guilt or innocence of a defendant are subjects deemed to be more likely to have a material prejudicial effect on a criminal proceeding. Defense counsel have made numerous extrajudicial statements explicitly about this case while a jury is sworn and seated during the state's case in chief. Defendant Williams's counsel, attorney Brian Steele and Keith Adams, defendant Kendrick's counsel, attorney Doug Weinstein, and defendant Stillwell's counsel, attorney Max Sharp, have all made extrajudicial statements to the media explicitly discussing this case in violation of Rule 3.6. The extrajudicial statements have included, among other things, interviews and statements to the Associated Press. Four of those interviews have been 25, 33, 43, and 107 minutes in length. The statements include, among other things, the attorneys' views and opinions about the case itself, opposing counsel, the new, now former judge, the jury, the outcome, and the guilt or innocence of specific defendants. Pursuant to OCGA Section 15-1-3-4, courts have the power to control in the furtherance of justice the conduct of its officers and all other persons connected with a judicial proceeding before it in every matter appertaining thereto. The state thus moves this honorable court to instruct the defense to refrain from making extrajudicial statements about this case moving forward. All right, so that is by Adrian L. Love. Now, what I find very interesting about this is not only that it comes on the heels of the video we made actually it wasn't yesterday it was two days ago at this point the video we made a couple of days ago which was saying look these interviews are making new evidence remember i'm going to link to that video at the end of this one so that y'all can go back and watch that but it wasn't i it wasn't it wasn't i who said it it was actually the lawyer you know i just cut out a piece from what they said because i thought they made a really good point this these interviews are making additional evidence now 
that could help the defense, but it could also hurt the defense. It looks like what Miss Love is saying here is it looks like she feels like it's hurting her case or at least she wants it to stop. Now, I have heard some people say that, you know, maybe Miss Love just doesn't want them bashing her. Maybe she's trying to use her powers and her her persuasive powers to get the defense attorneys to stop talking about her. One attorney was asked if the question insinuated would he still have professional respect for Miss Love after this all was said and done. And he said no. He said no. But he did go ahead. He did go on to to note that lawyer Hilton, though, is a respectable lawyer. Says, um, would you still respect a colleague personally knowing they behave in corruption and unfair practices just to secure a conviction of your client? Yeah, of course not. I wouldn't respect them if they did that. Um, by the way, I have a lot of respect for uh, for ADA Hilton. Um, I think she's a good attorney. Um, I think for the most part, she tries to do the right thing. We all got bosses. <laughs> so think about that. You know, uh, she, I imagine, love would have seen that and and maybe said, "Wow, not only are they out here talking about the case, they're claiming that their clients are innocent, which is what you would expect a defense attorney to do, right? Defense attorneys always." go to the media and say that these charges are baseless. My client is innocent of all charges or my client is not guilty or my client is not guilty of all charges. That's quite common. But, you know, maybe love saw that. And maybe she got maybe her feelings got hurt. Y'all. I mean, come on. She's a human, too. Right. So maybe she said, oh, my gosh, they are. They're putting it out there like I'm some kind of monster. You know what I mean? And, and I, let's be honest, most people viewing this video probably does see her that way. Um, so I thought that this was a timely motion to, to review. I thought it was something that is timely, not only because we just talked about it, but because it is true. There have been a lot of interviews. So what do y'all think? What do you all think? Do you think that the defense attorney should be able to keep talking about the case that if they have a particular opinion about the prosecutors, that they should be able to voice those opinions in the public while the trial goes on? Or do you agree with Miss Love? Do you think that everybody should should reserve their opinions and only talk about these things after the case? I've heard other commentators say, look, this is part of having a fair, open, transparent trial. The defense attorney should be able to talk. But I've also heard attorneys say that prosecutors are held to a higher standard and they're not able to talk. So they're not able to get out there and do interviews and 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 try to sway public opinion. Especially because a prosecutor, they have, you won't see prosecutors here, you know why? They have additional duties, additional responsibilities that they have to bear that defense attorneys don't. Um, and they have certain standards that they're supposed to live up to. Um, so maybe Miss Love feels like she's not even able to defend herself, right? Maybe she feels like, wow, they can get out here and they can they can present their case to the public. But I can't do that due to some kind of standard that the prosecutors are held to. So what do you think? I'd like to hear your comments. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I just feel like this is something we put on the table a couple of days ago. And apparently Miss Love was taking notice, as we all would expect her to. Right. That's her job. Uh, but let me know what y'all think in the comments.